Hello and welcome to Driver's Therapy. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the infamous leaking capacitor in the ECU. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about troubleshooting symptoms of a leaking capacitor, how to find a leaking capacitor and how to get to it, and also your options and the different routes of solutions you could do to try to fix that leaking capacitor. All right, let's kick it off. For about six months to a year, I've been having an issue with my car. Cold starts, car dying just for no random reason, car not wanting to start. So what I did is I spent a lot of time troubleshooting it, more time than I could literally communicate in this video. I replaced so many parts, guys, and I wasn't just doing it aimlessly. Like the symptoms of the car definitely reflected the possibility of a bad part, but none of it fixed it. And long story short, I ran after at nighttime when I was going to bed, I was getting desperate, so I was just Googling. Uh, Toyota Supra won't start, Toyota Supra randomly dying. And I would just read the post, just read them. You know, if they're relevant or not, just read, 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 read. And then I ran into one one day, almost right when I was about to give up and just give the card to a dealership so they could figure it out. And all of a sudden, somebody was saying, I've replaced a laundry list of parts and my car still isn't acting right. And then they said that their friend let him borrow an ECU and the car had no issues. And then later on, he opened up that ECU and found some leaking capacitors. So what did I do? I pulled out the ECU, this one right here, and I pulled the top off, and pulling off the top is a pain in the butt. We'll talk about how to do that easier here in a bit. And I found it, and guys, there it was, a leaking capacitor. Okay, so you suspect a leaking capacitor, what do you do? Well, first off, remove your ECU from your car. Now it seems like that'd be a daunting task, but on the Toyota Supra, it's right at the footwell. A couple of plastic clips and a couple of 10 millimeter uh, nuts and removing the harness and boom, your ECU's out. So originally, I didn't talk to anybody and I didn't do a lot of research. I just kind of wanted to open this up and see if I had a bad uh, capacitor. So there's these screws up here and what I did is I removed these screws because they say that you just remove this top cover and you can look at it. <laughs> well guys I removed these screws and this top cover did not move and the reason why is that there's like this plastic rubbery seal on there and it has been baked on there and good luck trying to get it off. Using a flathead you're going to be bending this aluminum top and it's just it's just really bad. Here's a tip, get a uh, blow dryer or heat gun and just heat around here. Don't, you know, of course this is electronics, so you want to just place a heat gun or, or on the same position. But what you're doing is you just want to heat up the area. And then once it's kind of nice and hot, what that's going to do is going to loosen up that uh, adhesiveness to that seal. And then you could pry it up with the screwdriver a lot easier. So at this point, we're going to pull up on the circuit board, but you want to be very careful and very slowly you're going to pull up on it because below it, there's going to be some ribbons and you don't want to pry on those. Now I did see in another video where somebody stuck a, a screwdriver like right here to hold it, which actually that worked out really nicely. And at this point in time, you can look inside your circuit board and look for those caps. So once you pry that open, essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at your board. And this is a picture of the capacitors you're gonna be looking at, they're brown. And essentially you're gonna be just looking at anything that just looks like rust in the bottom of their little legs. And the legs is where they connect. And you wanna look around, you're also gonna to wanna to look kind of something that looks like a, you know that hot glue, you know, either like brown or just like a clearish, murkyish glue looking stuff at the bottom. Essentially that means that the capacitor's just leaking. When you, you have to look at all the brown caps, pretty much, that's what they call them, and just look around. If you're unsure, you could send pictures or you could post them on the forums or talk to the guys out there, but most likely you'll be able to see if it's leaking. So, once you've identified a leaking capacitor, what are your options? Well guys, I love my Supra. It's my daily driver, and I wanna drive it all the time. So, I could go through the process of trying to repair it. That's one step. And there is uh, some information online how to repair it or buying another ECU, a used one. Of course, the risk of buying another ECU is that you could have run into the same issues later on. Um, but I think I found the perfect solution. Essentially for me, I wanted my car running. So what I did is I ordered an ECU. It got here. 
And guess what guys, I popped it in, car fired up, car runs like a dream. I honestly think it's a little bit runs better. And the reason why I think it's not just in my head is because a lot of these capacitors also control shifting in the automatic transmissions. And there's a possibility that this capacitor was impacting starting and a couple of shifting issues. So what I decided to do is I'm not gonna ignore the issue that I, because this ECU is like in prime condition, it's beautiful, minus the capacitors. So what I did is I decided to go online and order all the kits people talked about. And like this solder right here is the best solder you could buy for circuit boards. So I got that. And then you have a solder sucker, which is designed to make uh, removing uh, and getting uh, some of these electrical components off the circuit boards easy. And I bought the capacitors themselves. They're not very expensive. And this is actually a capacitor kit from eBay. And you've got all, pretty much all the capacitors you could think of. And then this is actually another capacitor from a famous company online for electronics. And essentially, without going into detail, because I'm not a circuit board guy, you want to make sure that these capacitors have certain ratings, voltage and resistance, all that. You just want to make sure that you get the exact same match. I know some people says there is some tolerances you do, but just get the same ones. And of course I have, let's see what this is, a uh, desolder braid. So I pretty much have everything I need uh, right now. And uh, my soldering gun's over there. Um, it would flux in the whole nine yards. Everything I need to replace a capacitor. Here recently, I was working on the Acura NSX's OEM radio, and I got a chance to use a solder sucker for the first time, and it's a really cool tool. I do have soldering experience, and from the quick look at the Toyota Supra uh, circuit board, the leaking capacitors didn't damage the board a lot, so this should be a job that I look forward to trying out. So you guys make sure you follow along so you don't miss it, and hit that subscribe button, but I think it's gonna be a great challenge. And it's really cool that there's an option to do that. Well, guys, I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions about leaking capacitors, let me know. And uh, if you just have any questions for me or anything like that, as far as troubleshooting your car, or you think it's your ECU, hit me up and I'll help you out. I also want to share with you that I did a multimeter series on how to use a multimeter like a pro. So these type of tools and skill sets can help you troubleshoot an ECU. So make sure to take a look at that as well. All right, you guys stay safe. Punch that uh, subscribe button for me. I really would appreciate that because, hey, that shows you care. And not only that, it's a reminder when I come out with an awesome video. All right, talk to you later. Stay cool.